Good evening. Hello, Thelma. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Mom. Sorry to be a little late hopping on here. My kids won't go to bed and I'm having internet issues. But hopefully we are squared away and things will work out here. I'm going to give this just another minute to see who hops on with us tonight. And we will get started in just a minute. Hi Corinne. Happy Monday. My internet is doing all kinds of crazy things. And I don't know why. I'm trying to get things so I can see comments. There we go. All right. Well, ladies, real quick before we get started, just a reminder that my website address is here if anyone needs any supplies and each month I do a drawing from all those that place an order and use my host code and the winner for this month will receive this retired ribbon combo pack so if you're placing an order that is less than $150 you can pop that host code in there and have a chance to win a free prize and if your order is over $150, then don't use my host code because you've basically hosted your own show and you get the benefits. So we will go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining me tonight for this Mystery Monday. Without further ado, here is our sweet and simple Mystery Monday card. This is a sweet little card that doesn't require a lot of supplies, but still provides a beautiful card front and you can use this for any occasion. So we will go ahead and get, and get started and I'll show you how easy it is. First of all, you need a piece of cardstock for your card base. This one is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter on the long side. Hi Melody, happy Monday. You can also use the other style of card base which would be the four and a quarter by 11 and that one would be scored at the five and a half inch mark on the 11 inch side so it really doesn't matter which style of card base you use and we're going to go ahead and fold this in half this is Bermuda Bay and the stamp set that I am using is the sweet ice cream set and that coordinates with the designer series paper I chose, which is from the ice cream corner suite. I'm just not going too heavy on the ice cream tonight. We're using the sprinkle side instead. So I've got my card base folded in half, and I have a cardstock layer that is three and three quarters by five. You can emboss this layer if you want. I chose not to do that on this particular card, but you can definitely emboss it if you prefer. And I have some samples where I'll show you that I did emboss. So this is going to go together really easily. Thank you for sharing everyone. I so appreciate that. So I'm going to take my Stamp and Seal Plus. This is my favorite adhesive. It is great for cards and all 3D projects. And so I'm going to center this piece of designer series paper, which is four by three, on my cardstock layer. It's a little bit more of a border than I typically do, but I like it. And just press that down. And the next thing I'm going to do is add some ribbon. I have about 16 inches of ribbon. This is our gorgeous, no, I'm sorry, our Blackberry Bliss striped ribbon that coordinates with the ice cream suite. It's a beautiful ribbon. And I cut about 16 inches. If you want to tie a bow, make it longer or work with it on the spool. I'm actually just going to tie a knot like I did here on the front of the card. So just a word to the wise, if you're looking to tie a bow for a different effect, you can just increase the length of your ribbon. And so I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. You can actually tie your knot on either side of your card. You can do it on the left or the right. Probably not in the middle, but it really depends on how you're putting your card together. And so just a quick little knot, 
and then I'm going to trim my edges with my scissors. Give that a nice clean look. All right, and the next step, my ribbon's a little crooked here, I'm trying to fix it, there we go. And you can have it as close to the bottom as you want or slide it up to the top, up to you. Next, I'm going to layer this whole panel right on the card front. Now you can pop it with dimensionals if you want a little added height or you can glue it flat, which is what I'm going to do for this particular card. Just be careful, you're gonna have a little bump if you've already tied your knot. So just be careful of that. Really nothing to it though. And I add, if I've got ribbon or something that sort of interrupts the flow of paper, I like to add a little bit of extra adhesive. So I'm just gonna make sure my bow is straight, or my ribbon is straight, before I glue this down. And that's perfectly cute the way it is. You can see this has a lot of possibility here. So the next thing I'm going to do is use some punches to accent the front. And I have our double oval punch, and I'm going to use this in two steps. The first thing I'm going to do is take some Bermuda Bay and punch out the top scalloped oval and set that aside for a moment. And then I'm going to bring over my stamp and pierce mat because I'm going to do some stamping. And the Sweet Ice Cream set is a photopolymer set which is a clear set, and so I need a little extra cushion underneath my stamps. And in case you are new to stamping, I am going to be posting a video here on this page later this evening and over on my YouTube channel, which is Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm, about the differences between the photopolymer and the cling stamps, and then I will show you how to adhere the labels to your red rubber cling stamps. So I won't be going live with that, but I will be posting it here. So you can keep your eyes peeled for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the inside and then the sentiment as well. So I'll start with the inside. I'm going to stamp happy birthday in Bermuda Bay. And I just tap my ink pad. I don't smush my stamp down in. If I were to smush my stamp down on my ink pad, I would have ink all over this block probably on parts of the stamp where I don't want it. So don't do CPR on your stamps. Don't try to push them through the table. Just tap gently and then turn and look and see if you've got enough ink. And if you don't, just tap it again a little bit. <laughs> Mom, that might help you, but I actually had a request from someone else on how to put the labels on. So I said I would do a video. All right. Now I'm gonna add a little accent, so I've got happy birthday, and to go with the sprinkle paper, I'm gonna add with sprinkles on top and use Melon Mambo. So I'm keeping my ink colors coordinating with my cardstock colors. There we go. Now the inside is done here, and I've got a scrap of basic white and I'm going to stamp this Treat Yourself, which just perfectly fits in the non-scalloped oval from this double oval punch. I'm gonna close up my ink pads here before I stick my elbows in them. I've been known to do that a time or two. All right, so now, since this dye ink dries very, very quickly, I'm actually good to go and cut this out already without smearing it. So I'm going to, I used a strip of cardstock so that I can push it all the way down here. And this way I'm not really wasting any cardstock by punching out the upper oval and the lower at the same time. Although I could always save it for another occasion. I am gonna flip this over though because it was a little, I have a little extra cardstock. So I've got the treat yourself. And then all I'm going to do is simply layer this together, my small oval and my scalloped oval. And then this gets put on the card with dimensionals. Now, just a, I don't wanna say a word to the wise, a little bit of advice. When you're putting a 
punched shape or a die cut shape on top of ribbon, watch your dimensional placement. If you put, if I put two large dimensionals right in the middle, which is what I would normally do, it would be stuck right on the ribbon and it might not stay adhered to the card. It, the ribbon might cause it to move around some. So I'm going to use some of the mini dimensionals that we have and that way I can put them on the top and the bottom of the card and largely avoid the ribbon and that way the ribbon's going to stay where I want it and my sentiment is going to stay where I want it as well. So I'm just going to pick off the back of my dimensionals and then put this on the side opposite from the bow and you can move it wherever you want, a little closer to the edge or more to the middle. It all depends on what shapes you're using and how wide your ribbon is and things like that. And then I'm gonna come back and put a little bit of Stamp and Seal Plus on the back of my insert. This was five and a quarter by four. And then layer this inside. And then my card is ready to go. So like I said, a short and sweet card tonight, not too fancy, makes use of some of your designer series paper scraps, but gives you a perfectly lovely card layout too. And I wanted to show you, you can change up the look of the card simply by where you tie your knot and put your sentiment. So these are just mirror images and both look perfectly lovely. So you have some flexibility there with your card design. You know, ladies, I'm all about options. And of course, I have some more samples to show you. This one I like a lot. I did a masculine version. I realized my masculine birthday card section is getting a little bit low. So, Thelma, I'm glad you thought that card was cute. Thank you so much. So this one, I instead of using a punched shape, I used a die cut shape. This is the Sailing Home stamp set that coordinates with the smooth sailing dies. So um, this lighthouse is one of my favorite images. And then I used some more of the images from the stamp set, like the gulls and the boat on the inside of the card. And I also stamped my envelope with the boat to match. So that all coordinates nicely. And I didn't do a knot, I simply tied the ribbon around the panel. And I don't know if you can see this embossing folder doesn't come out too clear on navy, but I embossed the navy cardstock with our high seas embossing folder before I put it on the card. So there is one other sample for you. I also used one of my favorite stamps and one of my favorite designer series paper. I happened to have a scrap that was just the right size on my table. So I used the Forever Fern Suite and I embellished this a little bit more. I do have my bow and my punched shape, but I added some die cut and die cut and stamped images behind. And then I added a couple of the opal rounds, which came in our sand and sea suite. So they didn't come to coordinate with the fern paper, but they work beautifully together. It's one of the great things with embellishment is you can use them on a lot of different crafts and projects. And then this one, I kept it simple on the inside. And then I have one more card. Melody, this one's for you. I made a Christmas card today. I know I've been slacking a little bit in the Christmas card department. So I did pull out a Christmas card today and use some of our retired Christmas DSP along with our pine tree punch. And I just accented, I did punch the shapes out I embossed this one before I cut it out and then added a couple other pieces of designer series paper. And this one, while I did not emboss the cardstock layer, I did pop it with dimensionals just to give it a little more height on the card. And then added a Christmas message on the inside. So there you have it ladies, our short and sweet card tutorial tonight for Mystery Monday. Thank you so much, Melody. I love you. So I hope you enjoyed making that. If you crafted along with me, I would love to see what you made this evening. I will be back on Friday evening at 8.30, and I think we're going to do a tutorial where I teach you how to 
use markers on our red rubber cling stamps. Um, that can be a lot of fun. So I wanted to share that technique with you. And then I will be back this time next week with another Mystery Monday card. So thank you ladies so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as I said, I would love to see what you make on your own. Please share on the page. We all love to see and ooh and ah over each other's projects. So I hope you have a great week with lots and lots of stamping time. Take care everyone and happy crafting.